Okay, good afternoon, everyone. Thank you all for being here. Uh, it is a very warm welcome that we've given to our United States Attorney General, William Barr. Um, and, uh, you know, he's served two separate terms. He's our, both our 85th and our 77th Attorney General of the United States. Uh, through both of those terms, he has demonstrated that he is a true friend of law enforcement and a, uh, a righteous advocate for the rule of law. And we're very lucky to have him here today. Uh, Attorney General Barr asked for this meeting with our state, local, and federal partners uh, because it highlights what we do in Ohio very well. Uh, we know that coordinated effort and strong partnerships are the backbone of what we do in law enforcement. It's the way we work, and I think uh, you'll hear today that we have never done a better job of that in Northern Ohio. Uh, and I know that Attorney General Barr joins us too this morning, I'm sorry, this afternoon, in thinking about law enforcement officers who day after day, uh, in encounter after encounter, are putting themselves in harm's way. Uh, this morning, uh, we in Ohio are praying, praying for an Ohio State Highway Patrol trooper uh, fighting for their life after an accident last night. Uh, we're also praying for the family of a Detroit police officer uh, who was killed last night for another who was seriously injured in that same incident. And this comes just weeks after we had local HSI agents here in Cleveland who were fired upon and, uh, of course, a DEA task force officer who was tragically murdered in Dayton. So the stakes have never been higher for us. And the bottom line is that the people in this room are saving lives every single day. Just this week, in fact, uh, it's being unsealed today, uh, we have indicted on the federal level a person named Burgess Gould, who uh, sold a fatal dose of fentanyl to a person here in, in uh, Sagamore Hills, Ohio. Uh, this case was worked by local detectives and Cleveland DEA. It's, it's again, it illustrates the successes that we've had. Uh, we also, just this morning, uh, made an arrest of Dr. Martine Escobar for writing improper opioid prescriptions from his practice outside of Youngstown. And this case was worked jointly by DEA, FBI, the Inspector General of HHS, the Office of Ohio <coughs> Attorney General Dave Yost, and others. And finally, just yesterday, to highlight the violent crime initiatives that we have underway, a federal judge sentenced Sean Ford and Charles Rogers to over 33 years in prison for gunpoint robberies that they committed here in Cleveland, and that included firing on an off-duty police officer in pursuit. And that case was worked by ATF, Cleveland Police, Ohio Adult Parole, and the Cuyahoga County Prosecutor's <coughs> Office. So, ladies and gentlemen, I, I, uh, I, I will echo uh, again um, uh, how happy we are to have Attorney General Barr here, uh, and he is very anxious to hear from all of you. So, uh, without taking any more time, I will now introduce Attorney General of the United States, William Barr. Thank you, Justin. Um, thank you all for, for joining me this afternoon. When I was Attorney General, first time around, crime was at an all-time high. That was 1991 and 1992. It's never been higher. Uh, and until, up until that time, the federal government's role, really, in terms of dealing with the kinds of violent crime and drug-related crime we were seeing, wasn't as uh, expansive as it is today. Uh, it really started around that time with projects like Trigger Lock and Weed and Seed and other things. And the idea was to partner with our state and local law enforcement colleagues uh, and uh, work together focusing on gun crime, gang-related crime, drug-related crime. And since that time, we've expanded our cooperation uh, with uh, joint task forces. <clears throat> All the various federal agencies have been involved. And crime is half the level it was back in 1992. And I think it's largely because of the cooperation uh, of the federal uh, government with uh, our state and local <coughs> colleagues at the local level. While, while crime is lower than it was in 92, in too many places it remains stubbornly high. And as you know, here in Cleveland it's four times the national average. And although progress is being made, it's still at a high level. And so, uh, just as before, uh, my highest priority are dealing with the, the, the plague of, of drugs, of illegal drugs in this country, as well as uh, trying to lean forward as much as possible to work with our state and local uh, friends uh, in combating violent crime. And we're looking at ratcheting up our activities 
expanding our joint task force operations in a number of cities that have high violent crime rates. And the reason I'm here today is because uh, I talked to Justin about uh, doing this in Cleveland. And while no final decisions have been made, uh, I thought it would be useful to come and, and talk to you uh, about this concept of expanding our the number of joint task forces in operation here and uh, expanding the marshal's activities uh, in, in going after uh, fugitives. Uh, another problem that I wanted to discuss is, uh, you know, the continued problem we have with drugs. Uh, the opioid crisis uh, remains uh, at the top of everyone's mind throughout the country. As you know, methamphetamine in many jurisdictions is surpassing opioid as a problem. Uh, and sort of underlying a lot of this is the emerging problem of fentanyl, which is very deadly. And a lot of the overdoses we're seeing is because fentanyl is mixed in with other drugs. And so I know here we've had increased cocaine overdoses. We've seen a, a, a rapid rise in, in fentanyl overdoses. And we see car, car fentanyl again uh, uh, emerging as, as a danger. It's so potent. Uh, and this is going to require a concerted effort across the board to, to attack uh, these dangers. I'm concerned that, there were, you know, we made a lot of progress on the diversion of, of uh, legal uh, opioids and overprescription and so forth, and I think that's really been the lever that we were able to stabilize the increase in, over, in, in overdose uh, deaths. But I'm concerned with uh, the fentanyl uh, increasing methamphetamine being used now as a delivery vehicle for that fentanyl, uh, that we're going to start seeing more overdoses. Uh, and so we have to redouble our efforts. One of the things I want to mention that's extremely important is the scheduling of fentanyl uh, analogs. As you know, there are a lot of synthetic forms of fentanyl that can be made. And just by changing a molecule, uh, it, you would make it legal. And uh, the DEA was able to obtain emergency legislation to have uh, fentanyl analogs scheduled for a, for a short period of time, and that expires in February. Meanwhile, we had pressed the Chinese, which is the major source of fentanyl, to schedule fentanyl analogs, and they have done so. And now we are asking Congress to permanently schedule fentanyl. And uh, as I say, we need to do this by February or else we're going to be facing an influx of fentanyl analogs from, from Mexico. Uh, and uh, one would think it would be an easy thing to do, but nothing is easy, easy these days in Congress. Uh, so, uh, you know, that's something we're working hard on. But the main reason for joining you this morning, I mean this afternoon, is to, is to get your thoughts on, on how we could uh, uh, ratchet up our efforts here uh, in addressing violent crime and narcotics trafficking, and uh, whether there's an appetite here for expanding uh, our joint task force. Thank you, sir. Uh, and I think Deputy Chief Joellen O'Neill from the yes. Division of Police was uh, had some remarks as well. Good afternoon and welcome to the City of Cleveland. Uh, General Barr, thank you for coming to the city here and uh, listening to our issues that we have, not only throughout the City of Cleveland, but through the county, the state, and of course across the, the U.S. Uh, A.G. Herman, I'd like to thank you and all our federal, state, and local partners. Uh, we work really well with them. We have a great partnership. And without this partnership, uh, we really wouldn't even be able to make a dent into our, our, our problem with uh, particularly opioids, violent crimes, and drug violence. With the introduction of fentanyl into narcotics, <coughs> we've seen an increase in deaths in the city of Cleveland. In 2019, we've already had 100, 198 overdose fatalities and 604 non-fatal non overdoses. And that's just in the city of Cleveland. Um, that's an average of 18 deaths that our heroin investigation team responds to and 50 non-fatal investigations each month. But we really need to see a decrease in that. Um, law enforcement
person is trying to come back to war on the street to the best of our ability, but we need to continue help. Uh, prosecuting the suppliers and the dealers is, is somewhat difficult, and until the criminals are punished, uh, they'll, they'll continue to feed our opioid war. And lastly, um, the hospitals. When we take our, our victims to the hospital, we need some help there with getting them into rehabilitation quickly so that they're not fatal overdoses, don't become fatalities. Hopefully today's discussion will bring some new ideas and we're combating these issues and challenges that we have. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you, PC. Uh, that's going to conclude the open portion of this um, uh, event and uh, we are gonna have a closed session round table uh, with the Attorney General. <coughs> so at this point in time, I'd just like to reiterate for the media, some of us in this room will be available following the closed round table. Uh, and we will make ourselves available for remarks afterwards. Um, but as of right now, I'm gonna ask our friends in the media, uh, given the instructions that you've received before, if you could uh, leave the room, please. Uh, turn off your cameras and your microphones. Uh, anything else that you have? Thank you.